I read your brilliant piece in The Spectator, which completely summed up what I felt. Uh, let's talk about the drama first. We'll move on to the playwright, Sir David Hare, in a minute. Tell us the plot and basically what was wrong with it in terms of it being a BBC drama. Well, the, the, problem, the, the whole problem with it was, and we should have realised, we sat down to watch it and rather hoped it might be an interesting drama, uh, me and my missus, uh, and then saw the word hair crop up, uh, <laughs> which, which made us immediately know that it was going to be uh, a cascade of, of effluent. Um, but we continued to watch it because we're boring uh, and we had nothing else to do. And everything was predictable. I, I don't just mean the plot was predictable and the plot is predictable. I mean, all of the characters are predictable. You can tell who the good characters are, whether they're black or white, male or female, transgendered or straight. As soon as you see a black, <laughs> transgendered female, you know good, they're good, good, saint, hero. saint, yeah, <laughs> they're sainted. Uh, and and it was, a, a, of course, it was full of lies as well. Now, it's a drama, so, you know, these things are made up, and maybe they should be full of lies. But in this case, uh, David Hare apparently thinks that the entire judiciary is made up of black folk. The judges, the barristers, the lawyers, the solicitors, the clerk, court, the clerk courts. Uh, but then it cut to the Conservative Party cabinet, and there wasn't a black face to be seen. And so you, you immediately gathered from this that this wasn't a drama. It was just a really, really boring, addled old left-wing twat hitting you over the head with his own view of the world. Yeah, I, 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 I've never seen the worst drama. It, 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 but it was, it's, I want to watch it now. It, yeah, it's good. Well, it, it's, <laughs> it, it, it is laughably moronic. Yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah. Uh, kind of compelling in that respect. Uh, but uh, everything was wrong. You know, first of all, the premise everything is was wrong. Uh, the, the premise is that the evil Tory minister who wants to privatise the NHS, of course, they all do. By the way, uh, evil Tory ministers are currently uh, very busy in real life starving school children. You notice that. Mm -hmm. So Sir David probably will do a drama about that soon. But anyway, he wants to privatise the NHS, but he's haunted by this secret scandal that he's got a love child. Uh, I mean, that's not a scandal anymore. This is Boris bonking Boris's Britain, the bed-hopping prime minister who has a, a number of children that we can't quite determine. This is a scandal uh, from way back in something like 1975. It doesn't count anymore. He hasn't noticed that time has moved on, this guy David Hare, has he? That, that's exactly, exactly right, mate. Uh, it's stuck in the 1970s. It's also obvious that it has to be an attack on the Conservative Party. <laughs> I'm not a Conservative. I don't like the Conservative Party. But every single thing that this idiot writes <laughs> is an attack on the Conservative Party, regardless of the facts of the issue, regardless of humanity, regardless of all the things which make a good drama, such as humanity, character, wit, humour, all those things, all that goes out the window. It has to be an attack on the Conservative Party. And, you know, the idea that anyone would be outraged by the fact that this guy has a, a love child who is of mixed race is an absurdity, yeah. uh, and a particular absurdity with the Conservative Party, which is far more advanced along the line than most of the other parties, yeah. other than mine, the Social Democratic Party, of course. Yeah, of course. They, no, these are not, the, there is, I know it was. There are no characters, uh, there is no character formation in this drama. There are merely cardboard cutouts into which David mm. Hare places his left-wing prejudices. Uh, the uh, scandal, the, the, the brewing scandal about his love child that wouldn't in real life be a scandal, of course, is reaching the evil newspaper run by a ruthless editor uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> who has no idea about journalistic law uh, the, uh, and no idea about what a good story is, no idea about what you're allowed to print. Uh, this guy, David Hare, has been getting newspapers wrong since 1985 when he got them badly wrong in his drama Prague. Uh, which was about an evil sort of Murdoch type proprietor. Which people think is a good drama. Yeah, I have to remind you of this. Yeah. That the, the kind of hamstered literati 
and the BBC think that Pravda is a work on 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 in comparison with Troilus and Cressida, <laughs> or, or 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 Richard the Third, they think this is brilliant drama. It's you, you know, and it's awful, and it's boring, and it's 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 interesting that of all the things, when you watch a drama, when you, when you watch anything, drama is meant to reflect real life, and there's usually humour in real life. And the one thing you never get from hair is the slightest glimmer of humour. No. Uh, and just as in a John le Carre novel, you never get the slightest glimmer of humour either. So th the thing is that uh, for drama, for a television drama, it's fine. You can suspend disbelief. You don't have to make it a historical tract, you know, totally no. act true to real life. Uh, but David Hare, any... Uh, any encounter with or any meeting between reality and the fantasy he w world he creates is entirely accidental. The world he creates is so ludicrously unrealistic that it makes his dramas completely implausible. So, yeah. so yes, you don't have to be utterly accurate to do a TV drama, but uh, a toehold in reality will help the viewers accept its plausibility. Mm. This uh, does nothing of the uh, kind. It's a total fantasy of his own weird creation. That's exactly right. I mean, you need for a drama to be able, no, no matter how surreal it is, to have, as you put it, full reality. None of that uh, but in fairness to Hare, who I cannot stand, <laughs> this is the way that drama has been going in the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. And it's not just the BBC. You know, mate, I remember uh, 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 the series called The Liar, which was on ITV yep. uh, about four or five years ago, uh, which we sat down to watch. Me and my wife sat down to watch this thing, and this will be interesting. You had to discern who was telling the truth between someone who'd been accused of rape and the woman who had been accusing him of rape. Yep. And the whole drama was sucked out of it <laughs> in the first week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was a sort of eight-week series. In the first week, <laughs> by the producers <laughs> saying, we couldn't possibly have the woman lying. Yeah. I, I mean, you just, yeah. it, it's just Spoiler beyond alert. imagination. Yeah, yeah. So the first scene of that, um, uh, I said to my wife, uh, Liar, I said, uh, yeah, the way I reckon this is going to work out is that uh, he'll be lying and she'll be telling the yeah. truth, yeah. Uh, which, of course, yeah. was the case. No, no suspense whatsoever. Let's talk. No suspense. Uh, let's talk a little about the home of the new drama, Roadkill, the BBC, which the new director general, something that you, as a former uh, esteemed employee, a uh, very uh, serious job uh, as editor of the Today programme on the radio, uh, that you know all about. Uh, but the BBC, the new director general, Tim D Davey, said uh, this left-wing bias is going to come to an end. It's going to be a brave new world where we're going to dare to be different. Well, uh, Roadkill doesn't seem to be uh, setting out down that road, does it? No, it doesn't. But in fairness to Tim Davey, uh, Roadkill was presumably commissioned about yeah. two years ago yeah, yeah. Uh, and filmed presumably a year ago. And I assume he's had nothing to do with it whatsoever. I have to say, you know, as someone who thinks that the BBC is on its last legs uh, and is reluctant to pay the licence fee, mm -hmm. Tim Davey has made a very good start. I mean, the first thing he did after the ludicrous equivocation from Tony Hall uh, about the last night of the proms and how they couldn't possibly use the words, uh, and it was a, simply an artistic choice that they couldn't <laughs> use the words, which was a downright, just a downright lie. Yes, it uh, was. Tim Davey, Tim Davey got the words back in in one minute uh, and sorted it out. And I think he probably does have uh, a decent agenda but he has got this institution which is harebrained. 